Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Now this week on my roundup of tech news, Factor has launched a brand new bike it claims is more aero than a specialized Tarmac SL8, while Campag has finally launched a new group set that could worry Shimano and SRAM, plus new products from Panaracer, Riley, Topic, Physique and Santa Cruz. Let's dive in. Now Factor definitely isn't holding back with its brand new Ostro Vam Aero race bike. It boldly claims it's not only seven watts more aero than a bike it replaces, but that is more aero than a Tarmac SL8 and Cervelo S5 as well. As with any new road bike launch, we know what to expect, don't we? A hike in aero performance, a few less grams, a bit more comfort, maybe some more stiffness as well, you know the score. But is that aero claim that really leaps out of the press release for me. Now we can only take the claims at face value. Nobody I know has ridden a bike, much less put it inside a wind tunnel to see how it really stacks up against its main rivals, but hopefully it'll come over the next few weeks and months. This new generation of all round aero slash lightweight race bikes are trying to juggle the competing demands of aerodynamics and low weight. The knee frame is claimed to weigh 820 grams for a size 54, so about a 40 gram weight saving over the old bike, so a bit, but not a huge amount. But it is giving away about 125 grams to the SL8, which weighs 695 grams for a size 56. So a bigger frame weighs less than a smaller frame from Factor. So the weight savings aren't as impressive as we might hope. On its own then, the frame isn't especially lightweight, but the new wheels definitely are. They are extremely light and help the new bike hit the magical 6.8 kilo UCI weight limit. The new Black Ink 4858 wheels weigh just 1,270 grams, which is highly impressive for a deep section aero wheel. For comparison, the Raval Rapid wheels on a tarmac are over 1,500 grams, and Hunt's new sub 50 limitless wheels I saw a few weeks ago are just below 1400 grams. So these new wheels definitely strike me as the most impressive part of this bike launch, more impressive than the frame in my opinion. The look of the bike is evolutionary, it's not a complete new direction, but there are a few details that definitely stand out. The very narrow hourglass head tube, for example, which is deeper as well, but not as dramatic as the SL8 nose cone. And like the SL8, the seat tube is now much slimmer as well to really minimize weight at the back of the frame. While up front, the fork blades are much slimmer and deeper as well to reduce that frontal surface area. The new Factor Ostro Fam is a top dollar bike, as we come to expect from the company. The frame set retails for 5,500 pounds and bikes start from 9,000 and go all the way up to 11,000 pounds. And yes, I have asked if I can test one and hopefully that will happen in the future so I can see how it compares to Tarmac SL8, which as you'll know, it's a bike I've been highly impressed by. Campag really shocked the world, well me at least, with its 1x13 speed Eckhart group set back in 2020. And it looked for a moment like Shimano and SRAM would have a real battle on their hands for gravel bike supremacy. But while Eka has definitely been popular and a good move for the Italian company, it definitely faded away as Shimano and SRAM have brought updates to their gravel bike group sets in recent years. They, in my opinion, needed a more affordable version since it launched back in 2020, which they finally done today. It's called Eka GT and the carbon fiber is replaced with aluminium to make it a bit more affordable than the original group set all those years ago. Although the weight does jump up to nearly 2,700 grams from just under 2,400 grams. So a weight penalty for that move from carbon fiber to aluminium. The company has also taken this opportunity to increase the gear range options. So there are now four cassettes to choose from with a wide range 1048, along with a new smaller 36 tooth chainring making a clear push towards the bike packing community and adventure riders who would definitely appreciate the low range gears for when you're riding with loads of luggage on your bike. 
The new chainset also has a wider key factor, the same as Shimano GRX, measuring 151 millimeters. Some other small changes include a bigger pulley wheel on the revamped rear mech to stop mud clogging it in bad conditions, so a great one for UK cyclists, and it's also made from aluminium as well and looks pretty sleek in my opinion. They've also changed the clutch locking mechanism which was occasioning a bit of a fiddle on the original Echo when taking out and refitting a rear wheel. Meanwhile, the hood ergonomics have been refined with a focus on the area where the palm of the hand sits on a hood for more comfort and control in their word. But until I get a chance to ride a group set, I can't really comment on what that improvement actually means. But personally speaking, I've always liked the hood ergonomics on Campad group sets. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. The company has also launched a brand new Zonda GT wheel set, the Matcha group set, weighing a claimed 1,690 grams with a 23 mm internal rim width and a company's unique G3 spoke lacing pattern. And so to the price, Eckhart launched back in 2020, before the pandemic, with a price of $1,700 while the new group set is $1,600, so not much cheaper, unfortunately, but the way the global economy has rocketed over the last few years, it's probably no surprise the group set isn't much cheaper than the one that launched four years ago. So interesting to see how the group set is received, both by you people watching at home, and whether bike manufacturers take the opportunity to spec the new group set on their bikes, and what it does to complete bikes in terms of price, and how it compares to what Shimano and SRAM are offering. So I do hope the new group set is well received by you at home and the bike companies, and we see more options on the market just to make a change from all the Shimano and all the SRAM group sets we see on bikes these days. Right, I've got some other cool stuff to show you that I've literally just seen at a UK bike show call a few hours ago, just got home. So let me share some cool new stuff that coming out very soon and we'll start with a brand new tire from Panaracer. So hands up if you're looking for a new fast road tire, aren't we all? Well, Panaracer have just launched a brand new Agilis Fast to this lineup. It's a brand new flagship tire that's been made using an electron beam bonding process, which uses kinetic heat to melt the material together and essentially improves the precision of the manufacturing for better quality control and apparently better performance as well. And a result of all that is a tire that's both lightweight and claimed to be as fast as anything on the market right now, including the very popular, the benchmark Continental GP5000. Take the claims with a pinch of salt, of course, we'll wait for independent testing and my own testing and testing from other people to see how the tire actually performs and how it stacks up compared to GP5000 and other tires in the market right now. Now, the only downside to a new tire for me is it's currently only a clincher tire. There is no tubeless version yet, but hopefully that will change in the not too distant future. But if you hate tubeless, you like inner tubes, especially TPU inner tubes, and want a fast, lightweight tire, this could be worth checking out. I'll put a link to their website down below for when it's available, which is very, very soon. Now, this is a cool looking bike that takes me right back to the 1990s with its splatter paint finish. Underneath the cool paint is a surly preamble a steel framed flat bar gravel bike built up with SRAM rival access group set. And it's definitely a bike I would love to ride. It looks really cool. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. This is a Riley Fusion, the British company's flagship road bike, and it looks stunning, doesn't it? Both because of the cool anodized finish around the head tube, which I really like, but also the smoothness of the junctions on a frame, which you don't often see on titanium. That's because the company for the last few years has been using investment casting to give these amazing seamless lugs between the tubes, but it's now also using 3D printed parts as well, but you won't spot it on the frame, it's so seamless. And that's because 3D printing normally gives a rough surface texture and it really stands out on the dropouts, on a mason and moot, for example. But Riley somehow have managed to create a really smooth surface that means that part on a frame blends into the rest of the frame. And this new 3D part is in the seat tube junction where the top tube, the seat tube, and the rear state merge together. So really impressive utilization of cutting edge technology on a very classic frame material to bring it bang up to date and looks as silky smooth as any carbon fiber road bike. 
And rim brakes aren't dead, not quite. The company still offers a rim brake road bike in its range, this, the T325. So if you want a titanium road bike without disc brakes, well, here you go. Topic has some cool new products and tools in its range. Are you looking for a lightweight, minimal bottle cage that doesn't cost a fortune? Well, here we go. The brand new Fessa cage is made from reinforced carbon fiber and weighs 18 grams and costs 25 pounds, much cheaper than the 60 pounds of the carbon cages it's been offering for the last few years. So it's only marginally heavier than those much more expensive cages and it looks really smart. I think that would look fantastic on any lightweight carbon road bike. The company also has a really smart new saddle bag that comes with a ratchet tool packed away inside a space with two small inner tubes and CO2 canister and tubeless repair plug carried underneath and straps to the rails of a saddle using Velcro. So very smart design. I like the fact you have a high quality ratchet tool included in the price of that and packed away inside. Looks very cool. But the best new product from Topic is this, a digital torque wrench. It's designed to be compact. So you can take it with you when you're traveling, going to events and abroad and use a row of LEDs to let you know when you hit the correct torque. It goes from one to 10 newton meters, so ideal for most small jobs like doing a stem bolt or a seat post. Not a home mechanic sort of tool, but when you're traveling, it looks ideal. It's not cheap though at 160 pounds, but it looks well designed and well made and certainly very cool. Now prepare your eyes for this, something a bit mad. It's a Santa Cruz Skitch, which grabbed my attention at the show. It launched last year, but the first time I've seen one in the flesh, and my goodness me, what a bike. It's a bonkers commuter e-bike, that takes the company's Stigmata gravel bike and adds a Versua motor and battery for possibly the ultimate about town, across town, going to a gym, college, work, whatever you need to get to in a hurry and get there in absolute style. This one has been built up with deep section reserve carbon wheels for maximum aero, while Panarisa gravel tires and space for up to 50 mil wide tires gives that bike the off-road capability you might want while a flat handlebar gives you plenty of control for weaving through traffic, that you could, if you want, fit a drop handlebar if you want more speed and aero for your commute. I know it looks absolutely mental, but I think it'd be a load of fun to ride it, and yeah, probably crazy expensive, but I can't think of a cooler bike for commuting across town, get to work or college or wherever you're going. And now, if you made it this far into the video, a very special hot scoop for you. Physique is about to launch adaptive versions of their Alliante and Antair saddle. Adaptive is their name for the 3D printing technology they've been using for the last few years and of which I'm personally a fan of. And they are increasing the range of options with the Alliante and Antair being two really popular shapes of saddle in their range which are now getting the adaptive treatment. No details on when they're actually available or prices just yet, but check out the Physique website in your region for more news very soon. So a hot scoop for you today. Anyway, that's all for today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.